tonight, coming to you from the middle of the world, the one and only, from Telesur Studios in Quito, Ecuador, it's our privilege and our pleasure to introduce you to Andrew Self. Newsflash. Usually voting is of no real significance. It usually ends up lulling people into a false sense of security. They think that representatives can do what they want them to do. It ends up moving them away from popular pressure. They could be doing something much more useful than campaigning for some bullshit politician. And anyway, it is often the conservative politicians who can make the changes that liberals promise. Look at the Vietnam War, for example. It was Nixon who ended the Vietnam War due to pressure by popular movements. And even on the off chance, the very, very slim chance, that some radical politician does get elected, well, the protests become friends with big business, hobnobbing with their new people, telling everyone, well, they probably deserve it after all their hard work. And if there is any minuscule, probably not of great note change, this will lull people back into the false sense of security of supporting bullshit electoral politics. As the May 68 graffiti said, it is stupid to submit to your bosses, but equally as stupid to choose them. She can solve any international crisis with a single joke. Strong enough to wrestle Russian bears, yet cool enough to defuse any Korean missile. Smart, bold, and stylish, the world has never seen a woman quite like this. Hillary Clinton, the action figure. Yesterday, to a place we've been to before. Hillary Clinton represents the worst of the Washington machine. The arrogance of power, corruption and cover-up, conflicts of interest and failed leadership with tragic consequences. The Washington machine is destroying the American dream. Welcome to The Self Show. Vote one, self. Last week, the 2016 US presidential elections really started to heat up. Rand Paul, the Republican senator and the owner of the world's flattest head, declared his intentions to run via the geniusly named RandPaul.com. Now, looking at some of his policies, presumably he's going to gut women's rights. Can a nation conceived in liberty carry its head high if it denies protection to the youngest and most vulnerable of its citizens? Can a country founded on God-given rights continue to thrive without understanding that life is precious, a gift from our Creator. I believe there will come a time when we are all judged on whether or not we took a stand in defense of life from the moment of conception into our last natural breath. I promise you I will always take a stand for life because liberty cannot be protected if life is not. Backpedaling on cutting funding to Israel while also calling for aid cuts on Palestine. I'm proud to support Israel, America's longtime friend and ally in the Middle East. Israel's cafes and buses are bombed, towns are victimized by hundreds of rockets, and its citizens are attacked by Palestinian terrorists. It's time we took a stand for Israel by standing up to the enemies of Israel, the enemies that murder Israeli citizens. That's why I proposed a bill called the Stand with Israel Act to cut off the flow of U.S. taxpayer dollars to the Palestinian Authority. As long as the Palestinian Authority is allied with Hamas, not one more tax dollar should flow to them. And of course, his views on education, education, presumably he is going to cut funding on spelling and grammar classes also. new leader and a new way. Rand Paul. Rand Paul's plan to defeat the Washington machine? Balance the budget by law. Require Congress to read legislation before they vote on it. Term limits on Washington politicians. 
I have a message. A message that is loud and clear and does not mince words. We have come to take our country back. Defeat the Washington machine and unleash the American dream. I'm Rand Paul and I approve this message. But if you really want to stand with Rand, don't listen to his crazy policies. Buy his shit from RandPaul.com. Like, for example, the blankie, a perfect gift for all your insecure friends. If a blanket with Rand's face seems a little confrontational for you, why not try Rand on a stick? Yes, I'm not even making this shit up. I'm going to read directly off the website. He said, Rand Paul Freedom Paddles are printed on sturdy corrugated plastic and are great for rallies, parades, meetings, opera, church services that lack air conditioning and so much more. Yes, these sturdy corrugated plastics can't stand up to air conditioning. But Rand Paul is not going to be the next president. Polls show that about 1 in 10 people support him and all those crazies that do support him tend not to come up on election day. I guess his prospects are about as looking as solid as his freedom paddles. But Rand Paul might not be the biggest joke in this erection, I mean, election. Jeb Bush has decided to run, and the Bushes are kind of like Fast and Furious movies. They should have stopped at one, or maybe not run at all. And Hillary Clinton, every liberal's favorite politician, has decided she's gonna run even after a whoop de fucking do scandal of saying that she didn't use government emails to send private emails. After this, Obama said, don't worry, we see all your emails anyway. In the coming weeks and months, I look forward to an exchange of ideas and substantive policy proposals. I believe that every American deserves the right to rise and the opportunity to achieve the American dream and that abroad, America should be respected by our allies and feared by our enemies. That's why it's critical we change the direction our country is heading. We must do better than the Obama-Clinton foreign policy that has damaged relationships with our allies and emboldened our enemies. Better than their failed big government policies that grow our debt and stand in the way of real economic growth and prosperity. I believe it's conservative ideas that will renew America, grow our economy, put our fiscal house in order, and make our great country even stronger. I know we can do better, and together, we will. And also there is Senator Ted Cruz. You see him walking around with t-shirts that say, Ted Cruz 2016. That's not his presidential bid. That's how old he thinks the earth is. We're ready for Hillary. We know exactly what to expect. Hillary Clinton represents the failed policies of the past. Does America want a third Obama term? Or are we ready for strong conservative leadership to make America great again? Please visit tedcruz.org and make a contribution. Sign up to volunteer and stand together to turn this country around. Together, we're going to win. Now let's have a look what each candidate would say if they got elected. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the Famously, there's been plenty of great campaign songs. Some of the great ones include Saddam Hussein with I Will Always Love You. Yes, that one is true. Angela Merkel with Angie, although I think she's pretty sure she forgot to check the lyrics out. It's either a breakup song or about Mick Jagger wanting to fuck David Bowie. Now imagine Angela Merkel and David Bowie together. But here are some I came up with for the US presidential candidate.
right, guys. Here's my campaign song. Soy mal querido por Hillary Clinton. Yo tampoco la quiero. La ra 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 ra, la ra 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 ra, ra 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 ra. Or possibly this one. Look. If you had one shot, or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, that you capture, just let it slip. And tonight on The Self Show, we've got a very special scoop. Rand Paul is going to join us. Thank you, Rand, for joining us. Now, most people think that you're a prick. What would you say to this? When does my honeymoon period start? I had a big victory. I thought I got a honeymoon period from you guys in the media. And are you doing anything at all sensible for the people of the United States? I've never campaigned on that. It's not part of our platform. And what is the strangest thing you've ever seen, Mr. Paul? I've heard of many tragic cases of walking, talking, normal children. And you're a doctor. Can you please explain sex to us? Don't worry, it's only mixture of bodily fluids through direct contact. And what about using all that hot air that comes out of your mouth to power the world? But I don't want to shut down all forms of energy such that thousands and thousands of people lose jobs. To end up, Mr. Paul, I would say that most of your policies are bullshit and come out of an Ayn Rand novel. What would you have to say to this? Part of the problem is, is that you end up having interviews like this where the interview is so slanted and full of distortions that you don't get useful information. I think this is what's bad about TV sometimes. So frankly, I think if we do this again, you need to try to start out with a little more objectivity going into the interview. Thanks for joining us on the show, Mr. Paul. Back to the regular programming. But. Elections are just like erections. They always appear when you don't want them to. And there's always something premature about them. We all know it doesn't matter who gets elected president of Carver. Do you really think it's going to change anything around here? Make one single person smarter, or happier, or nicer? The only person it does matter to is the one who gets elected. The same pathetic charade happens every year. And everyone makes the same pathetic promises just so they can put it on their transcripts to get into college. So vote for me, because I don't even want to go to college. And I don't care. And as president, I won't do anything. The only promise I will make is that, if elected, I will immediately dismantle the student government so that none of us will ever have to sit through one of these stupid assemblies again. 